Former Lions offensive lineman Mike Utley, who arrived at the Silver Dome just over an hour ago and went straight to the Lions locker room to visit with his former teammates. He's talking there with linebacker Chris Spielman. This is the first time since Utley was paralyzed just over a year ago that he's been back to the Silver Dome for a Lions game. And Gail Gardner joins us now with his story. Okay, Bob, thank you very much. And of course, on this Thanksgiving Day, it is very appropriate to look at the story of Mike Utley. It's a story that can't help but uplift us, can't help but inspire us. It is the story of a remarkable man. Dear Mike, I really miss watching you play. You are very brave, and even though you can't... There's a six-year-old kid, he wrote a letter and he said, I'm sorry you got hurt, but if I can do one thing, one thing I would want to do is can I switch my legs for your legs so I can watch you play one more game. Your friend, Mike. It was a day like any other day, a game like any other game, except that the Lions were in playoff contention for the first time in a decade. And it was a play like any other play. One that Detroit guard Mike Utley had been through thousands of times before. Eric Kramer called the play, the situation came up, pass play. And just like a regular old pass play that I was given everything I had, you know, and that's when the injury occurred. All I can remember is um, his legs coming up from up under him and, and his head hitting first. And um, <clears throat> instantly I knew it was, it was serious. And um, I think a lot of people don't realize that was my first NFL game. I can just vividly just remember just backing off of him, watching his body, making sure he would move. And I got a glimpse of his eyes, and I could see his eyes. I mean, the, just the, the movement that you would make with your eyes when you're getting ready to get up as though you're going to raise your body. But the eyes moved, but, the, but his body didn't. And um, from that point, I would just say it in my mind over and over, come on, come on, get up, get up, get up, get up. And um, that's when um, basically they came out with the stretchers and everything. And I recall looking down at him and he said, uh, Coach, I can't move my legs. You know, I can't feel my legs. And they say, and then the doctors are training, said, can you move anything? He said, he couldn't move anything. And then I got concerned. And then all of a sudden he started moving his arms. And I recall him pounding his legs and chest and couldn't feel anything at all. The one thing I did feel was legs burning. I mean, it was, they were on fire. My legs were on fire. I knew, and I couldn't move them. I knew I was in trouble. I knew that I had to be taken care of, and they carried me off the field. As a player, you never want to be carried off. You walk on, you run on, you always run or walk off. And that's something that bothered me, and it still does. I found that interesting that in some ways you were feeling more embarrassment than anything else. Oh, most definitely. You know, you. As a player being six, you know, six, six, 310 pounds or more, it's something that you, you take pride in. You, you walk with your chin high, and that day you had to have someone help you off. That hurts inside more than anything else does. That hurts. As they took Mike off the field in the Silver Dome silence, he gave a thumbs up sign to his teammates, and a cheering crowd responded to his courage. Meanwhile, in Seattle, his parents, Frank and Irene, were summoned to Detroit and couldn't hide what they first felt when they entered Mike's room at Henry Ford Hospital. Full of hurt, sorrow for Mike, sorrow for us, sorrow for everybody at the team. You know, football was Mike's life, and it's taken away from him. One doc comes in after the surgery and says, son, you'll never walk again. You know, I mean, I had an attitude for him that he would never, he'll never forget, but I won't either. Don't you dare tell me I can't do something. Don't do it. Don't tell myself or anybody else you can't do it. Because why, why limit someone's hope? You know, I plan on walking again. That's exactly what I plan on doing. Someone says, oh, you walk with a limp. Who cares? I'm walking. One month later, Mike was moved to Denver to begin the arduous rehabilitation process at Craig Hospital which specializes in the treatment of spinal cord injuries. Well, with Mike, he was always motivated from day one. Um, 
hated it when he had to miss a class because they took him to x-rays. It's not only that he was motivated, but he was also very, very positive. You had to be positive to go through what Mike has been through, beginning with physical therapy to increase his range of motion. He also had to learn to use a wheelchair, working on increasing his upper body strength in order to lift himself in and out of the chair. And then there was occupational therapy, relearning the things that used to come so easily, using your hands again, increasing dexterity. In all of this rehab process, do you remember the single most frustrating thing? They were teaching me to put my socks on. My mom was there, my therapist was there, and I couldn't do it at first. My shoe fell off and, you know, on the floor. I had to go pick it up. She went to, my therapist went to pick it up. I blew up at her. She said, don't you touch that damn shoe. Let it go. I took my shoe off. I took my socks off. I put my sock back on and my shoe back on. At that time, I couldn't tie it, but I put it back on. It took me over an hour to do that. But I tell you one thing, I got it done. When I, after my attitude settled down. I, I apologize to the therapist, but it's something that I wanted to do, and by God, I did it. But that was nothing compared to the standing bar, the rehab version of a torture chamber. The first time you have to stand after being laying down so much, your heart has to learn to pump blood back up to your head so you don't pass out. They would get me up standing no more than a minute, 30 seconds, I'd pass out. And the aides have to catch me and try it again. I come to, stand me up, I pass right out again. But now I can stand up as long as I want. The other day I stood for two and a half hours. The ability to stand was key. By late October, Mike was fitted with leg braces to begin what the therapists call gating, the start of the walking process. He has now moved on to a walker, which requires even greater upper body strength. So he is in the middle of an intensive weight training program. Ultimately, he hopes to maneuver solely on crutches. But the best thing Craig Hospital did for Mike was teach him to be self-sufficient. He drives his own van, does laundry and cooks, maneuvers easily in his specially built roll-in shower. And it was in his apartment where he still works daily with a therapist that he had his most joyful breakthrough. I was sitting in my bed at home. I looked down at my foot. And, you know, I double, took a double look, make sure I wasn't dreaming or anything. I was looking. And by God, my left foot, my big toe was wiggling. I waited a minute. Five minutes later went by. I still wiggling it. I called my aide back in here. I said, hey, 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 look at this. Is that moving? Is that me? He goes, wiggle it. Okay. Stop. I stopped. He goes, wiggle it again. By God, you are wiggling your silly toe. Though the mental and physical battle never lets up, Mike is full of enormous energy and spirit, which he gladly shares with his girlfriend Debbie and his family, friends, and teammates who have remained at his side. He has also started the Mike Utley Foundation to provide financial support for spinal cord research, education, and rehabilitation, with a special place in his heart for the youngsters. Pity is not a word in this man's dictionary. I have never asked why. I have never asked, and I never will. But every day I get up and I say, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thanks for the good sleep you put me through last night. And before I go to bed, that was a good day, God, thank you. You go back to sleep, next day you try it again. It may take, may take forever, but when I do, I, it's time for me to go. God's going to take me, and everybody's going to say, he tried, he never quit. He never quit. But I'm going to stay focused and do what I have to do get up there and get moving again. Just to have you understand, 
the kind of power that is inside of this man. The last time we went to shoot in Denver, which was maybe a week and a half ago, he was trying to use the walker and he was just having a bad day and he felt terrible because the cameras were there. We weren't getting the really good stuff that he wanted. Well, Lisa Lax, the producer of this piece, and myself, we were sitting in the editing room the other day putting this piece together. We get a phone call from Mike Utley. He just wanted to let us know that he took that walker, he walked all the way around the therapy room, out to the nurse's station and back again. He put the therapist on, on the phone so that she could confirm it to us. This man will never let up and he is such an inspiration to all of us. It's powerful, Gail. Thank you very much. Mike Utley, by the way, will be at midfield to toss the coin in what should be an emotional scene about 15 minutes from now. If you'd like to make a donation to the Mike Utley Foundation, send it to 5050 North 40th Street, Suite 201, Phoenix, Arizona. Defensive lineman paralyzed in a game a year ago, but his persistently positive attitude, his blatant courage, has been an inspiration to the entire football community. Today, he makes his first appearance at a Lions game since his injury. He returns as honorary captain. The Lions and their fans give thanks. The Detroit Lions would like to welcome a very special man to the Silverdome who is serving as the Lions' honorary captain for today's 53rd annual Thanksgiving Day game. How about a big welcome to the Lions' number 60, Mike Utley. This side is heads. He'll call the coin toss. Call while it's in the air. Heads. he calls. Tails it is. You have won the toss. Do you want to receive? Do you want to, you want to receive? Which goal do you want to do? Bring it back around there. Detroit has won the toss. Like to receive. Good game. So the uh, start of a very emotional day here, and it's uh, in a way a climax of an entire year for Wayne Fonts. You saw the head coach of the Lions embracing uh, his player, Utley. Wayne Fonts, who lost his brother a heart attack just a few months ago. He was the first man to get to his brother to try to revive him, only two years older, former assistant coach. He was uh, crying uh, openly during the national anthem, his daughter at his side. He's lost the starting guard, Eric Andelsek. And this is the scene during the national anthem that preceded the coin toss. As, as he told us, he said, uh, the tradition of being with my brother at every game, I, I still can't quite cope with the fact that he is gone. So this is the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report, brought to you by Domino's. Nobody knows like Domino's how you like pizza at home. Lions lead at the half over the Oilers 7-3. Honorary captain for Detroit today, their one-time guard, Mike Utley. Mike is standing by at the Silverdome. Give us a sense first, Mike, of what this has been like for you personally, coming into the Silverdome, going out to midfield for the toss of the coin. What's it been like for you? I'll tell you what, it's been a hell of an honor, especially when Chris Pillman, Lomas Brown, asked me to come out and wear my own jersey one more time. These guys mean a lot to me, and it's, it's something to come back to see people here in Detroit, the way they... You know, when they came out there, they held everybody right to their feet, and it's been a hell of an honor, honor, that's all I can say. Do you have a sense of how people have responded to your story, not just the people in the stadium today, but around the country? It's a, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's great, just because everybody here and in the rest of the country 
has been stood by me as I stand by, you know, what I believe myself I'm going to walk again. I just want to make sure I say thank you for NBC Sports and you, you, you Bob, and Francine, Lisa, and especially Gail Gardner for a hell of a job she did this story this morning. I just want to say thank you for people in Detroit and everybody else for standing by me. Thank you so very much. What did Wayne Fonts say to you, if it isn't too personal for you to relate that to us? This has been a difficult year for him, the death of his brother Lenny, and of course the death of Eric Andelsek, another Lions offensive lineman, plus your situation, and, and we could see that he was shedding tears on the sideline during the National Anthem. Basically what he said, what he said to me when I came off the field, he goes, this one's going to be for you, guy. We got to do it for you. And he said that that's what he believes and that's what I believe. You know, that all the work I do, Coach Fonz has been great. He stood by me and everything else, and now he, he gave me the opportunity to come out here as a coach to a player. He's, one, he's telling me to hang tough. That's what I'm going to do. David Rocker of the Rams was the player who was involved in the contact with you. There was nothing even remotely illegal about that contact. It was just something that happened in the course of a game. No one blames him even a little bit. Ironically, it turned out to be his first NFL game, and he has had to go for some counseling because of his feelings in the aftermath. I know that you haven't spoken with him yet. He says at some point he would like to speak with you. What would you like to say to him, if anything? Well, you know, no one knows what's going to hold down the future for me. And it's, it's something right now I'm just going to take day, with, day by day. And I'm just going out here right now rooting on the Lions. Lions, because that's where I, you know, that's my team. And this is the guys I want to play for. So whatever happens down the road, I don't know. So I'm just taking day by day. We know what's in your immediate future, Mike. Stick around. We'll talk with you again on the postgame, if that's all right with you.